for the fight of Bell Allen. This is it, George, yeah. this is it. We are in our moment. Yeah. Can I play a clip? Let me play a clip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard thing. Uh, is there it's whiskey in this? No. <laughs> <laughs> but during the clip, I can put some in if you want. All right, all right. As a man who owns a 1971 Pepsi Blue El Camino, I know how big a deal this can be. Can I just play this explosion, please? We found your little present, and really, you, you shouldn't have. Oh, that was good work, Jay. Oh, her. Yeah, Did you me. find both of them? Both? Ha ha. Nice try. My car. Why are you clapping? Would you, would you clap at the funeral of a loved one? Okay, I, I know it's acting and I know it's a whatever, but that car, never mind the fact that it's been a big part of the series, but that's a moment. How did it feel when you blew up the GTO? Oh, uh, just watching it now, well, you all saw it, just watching it now, uh, it breaks my heart. <laughs> we destroyed a piece of art to make art, so that's my justification for destroying the shell of one of the most beautiful pieces of metal on Earth. Right. I sound like <laughs> it's pornographic. <laughs> no, but, 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 but on Doyle, Blowing up that car would be the equivalent of killing off your favorite character on Cheers or, God forbid, David Crusoe's glasses breaking on CSI Miami. <laughs> it's on that level, right? <laughs> yeah, you probably could have done with a bit of that. But uh, <laughs> we, we uh, yeah, it it's, was a family member. So, as you know, at the end of season three, uh, creatively, we were pushing in a direction where we had to shake some things up. How much does your pops in the show mirror the, the relationship, mirror the relationship you have with your pops in real life? Uh, oh, Dad gosh, doesn't hit me as much as McGinley does. <laughs> yeah, well, Dad and my aunt, uh, Helena, uh, what they do is they uh, create their own uh, Doyle swag, and they, uh, they make their own Doyle T-shirts and uh, their own Doyle posters, and it's just basically my face uh, numerous times, and he wears those shirts, gives them to everybody for Christmas. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> My old man, oh my God, the stories I can tell you about him. He, he, uh, tell us one. Well, I, well I, I to, I, is it the time that, you know, the dog ate his teeth? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, okay, that's a good one. What's my other choice? Uh, the time he, Dad had septuple bypass surgery. Well, I want both. But let's, yeah. let's go with the surgery. My father, Mike Hocko, had septuple bypass surgery. So the uh, not have to do quadruple. No, no, no. Seven. He's oh, he's hardcore, man. He's like me. Go big or go home. Uh, sure, you're in there. Open them all up. <laughs> uh, they open them up, uh, and they had to uh, bypass seven major arteries. Mm. So uh, when they got in there, one of his arteries was made completely out of salt beef. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was a boiled egg it's laid right next. <laughs> It sounds reasonable. <laughs> he couldn't understand it either. He was like, I can't believe it happened to me. I can't. He was like e eating a leg of ham while he was uh, in the hospital bed smoking. <laughs> what a tragedy. Yeah. Well, what's going through your head when that's, your father's going into this kind of surgery? Well, that was a tense time. You know, and luckily we were all home during this was like seven years ago, and he's still he's doing great now. You know, he semi looks after himself. As you know, he can't be coached, that's for sure. <laughs> he doesn't take well to coaching. But uh, yeah, he's doing great and that was a tough, uh, tough time, but a great kind of family bonding thing, and it was, a, I think, a rebirth for him in a lot of ways, too. He was retired, sort of thinking about what he was going to be at, you know, what was he going to do to himself, and uh, you go through that kind of experience, and I think it teaches you something. Uh, it certainly taught a lot of us something, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of people who say they wish that if, if the, when their parents, when they lose their parents, they say they wish they had the opportunity for that second shot with them to fix some stuff. You kind of had a second shot with your dad. Did it change your relationship with him? <laughs> it may be for the first two weeks. <laughs> 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 they were, and then we're scrapping, you know, again. We scrap, oh my God, he's some funny. Because he works on the show, because he retired, so when I got to show, the only way I'd see my parents, so my mother comes and does background work. Yeah. My mother's like this high and she's 70 years old. <laughs> and sweet, oh my gosh, some sweet. And uh, dad uh, is a production assistant who um, they title, give him the title of senior <laughs> production assistant because he's a senior citizen. So he's, <laughs> so, so he's around all the time. Speaking of young, let's go back a few years to you on stage. Take a look at this for a sec. 
Oh, that's National Theatre School. Yeah. I, yeah. Would have been like 19 years old, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you have this idea of what you could do. <laughs> of what you could do. What a tool I am. I am such a tool. <laughs> Like, giving her to, giving her. But, yeah, but that's the thing, right? It's really, for, for a lot of cats who get into theater, one of the really important moments is when you realize you have to put your own self-conscious moments aside and just let her rip on stage. Yeah. Were you always that way? Did, were you comfortable from the beginning? Um, yeah, I, you, I think you get over the self-consciousness in you, uh, your stage fright. It's actually something you never really think about. You try never to think about it because it can eat you alive. And you really got to exercise outside of the one gig. So I'm constantly you know, doing Shakespeare to myself or, you know, uh, that sounds so dirty when no. I put it that way. <laughs> it, um, it really depends on which Shakespeare you're doing. <laughs> right. I'm always doing Shakespeare to myself, George. <laughs> so, yeah, but you gotta keep yourself fresh and you gotta keep, uh, keep the work fresh and uh, never phone it in. So I'm doing less and less in terms of the production or I'm trying to, uh, so I'm not preoccupied. In the beginning, doing the show was a dream because Writing, producing took me out of my head, and I applied the rules of the National Theatre School that, or what I learned there, to sort of go for it. I had to, but now I'm sort of, I have a little bit more time on my hands, and to stay out of my head and to not phone it in, I've just got to keep pushing it. And more work and working on other projects will do that for me too, right? All right, stick around. More with Alan Hawker right after this. <laughs> We're almost, uh, we're almost at uh, anthropology time. The, you know, when you were here before, we did the whole How to Speak Like a Newfoundlander. Yeah. And it was the uh, YouTube video that swept the nation. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about how to eat like a Newfoundlander now, okay? So explain to cod tongues, please. Oh, cod tongues. Uh, spectacular. It's a delicacy. It's a real... No, I've eaten a cod tongue. There's nothing spectacular about oh, it. Oh, you're just a wimp. Come no, on. <laughs> come on. It's scary. Well, okay, it's not scary. It's the good, things about, uh, good thing about cod tongues, you know, cod and fish in general, they don't talk. Right. So their, their tongues don't have the same, I guess cows don't talk either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this ain't working. This My ain't logic is thrown out the window, but it's gelatinous, so it's not yeah. kind of tough, and, and you gotta fry it at the, it's gotta be covered in flour, and you gotta fry it at the right temperature, but not for too long. And there's milk there too, right? No, you don't, no, no milk. No milk. No, no, it's like, that's disgusting. <laughs> Toss it in milk and season flour. I thought that's how you do it. Oh, maybe a chef would probably do that. Yeah. I'm just a, a, a dumb cook. But you do like uh, you put scrunchions in with it, and then right. scrunchions with anything really. It's the best kind. How about jigs dinner? Jigs dinner, yeah, yeah. spectacular. Every I cooked my first jigs dinner uh, this uh, Thanksgiving with a turkey. What's jigs dinner? It's like boiled dinner. So you have uh, you basically boil. It's like uh, us and the <laughs> and the Balkans. You just boil <laughs> root vegetables forever. Right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna give with you, salt meat. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to rethink what you just said, and that you boil everything. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Al <laughs> Alan Doyle's great line uh, is, uh, "What's your opinion on boiling stuff?" Whenever he talks to a chef, "What's your opinion on boiling stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> what? Boil everything. Boil it to death. Boil it until it has no flavor and put salt meat in with it and it's all perfect. <laughs> how about, um, how about jam jams? Jam jams yeah. are deadly. Yep. Yeah. So talk to me about this. This is a very specific thing, isn't it? Oh yeah, Purity Factories. Uh, it's like a Newfoundland brand. And the jam jams are one thing. Look, everyone's, there's a lot of Newfoundlanders here, obviously. Everyone's like, oh. You can feed them if you want. You can yeah. feed them if you want. Uh, yeah, you should have these uh, jam jams. They're really good. And they, the best thing, though, for jam jam, uh, for, from Purity, though, is the syrup mm -hmm. and the peppermint knobs. They're really good. It's like stuff that we cry about whenever we're not there. But I, I haven't eaten a jam jam in like 10 years. Look at this. Is uh, that, um, you haven't eaten a jam jam in 10 years. Is that because you have to do all those topless scenes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You should have one. Then you smell really good, man. Now, you're, you're a vegan, so I, I'm sure, I guarantee you there's some kind of animal product in this thing. <laughs> Everything that's any good got animal product. Oh, in hold on a second. Now they got milk. I can't have it. There's just more for you. Uh, yeah, so, um, you want to go feed them now? <laughs> go ahead. About to, you guys want Jam Jams from Alan Hocko? <laughs> Here, Joe. <laughs> pass them around. Does anybody have any food pass allergies? Around. If they have food allergies, you don't want to. You want to take them and pass them down. They're bringing food. Feeding the masses. Look at that. I love it. Nice work. That's class. Yeah, Classy, fun, man. 
What's one thing that Newfoundland has over Labrador? Oh, nothing. I would never dare say that. I would never. <laughs> We're an equal partnership. They have, Labrador is excellent. It's the first time in the years I've known you where I've seen fear in your eyes. <laughs> I tell you what, I feel horrible for Labrador. <laughs> Labrador doesn't get any, everyone always says, oh, Newfoundland, 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 but we're Newfoundland and Labrador. No one ever, ever, you know, I feel bad for them. I feel bad because they don't get as much love as they should, so. I've been to Labrador. I like Labrador. Yeah, it's loves, beautiful, yeah. man. Well, you're, you're a great guy. You no. Would, so I, I love Labrador, and I love Labradorians, and there you go. <laughs> well, Public Good Oil Season 4, Sundays at 9 o'clock, 9.30 in Newfoundland. Alan Hawker will be right back.